Hi everybody, welcome back to the garage. I'm Sam. And I'm Brad. Today, we learn a new skill. Using electricity. All right, in order to do electro etching, electrical -y something, I don't know how, I don't know the proper terminology for it. Um, you need an electrolyte. And for that, we're gonna use just white vinegar and with a little bit of salt in it to make it more conductive. I just dissolved a little salt and some vinegar. The vinegar will help with the etching because it's a little bit acidic. We're gonna need some Q-tips um, and of course a workpiece of some sort, some sort of metal. And then a power supply of some kind. Uh, this is a little bit overkill. I just had a little AC to DC adapter. This one is 12 volts, two and a half amps, which is probably overkill. But you can do this with just a nine volt battery as well. So you don't need anything fancy. For part of our experiment, we're gonna be using various types of metals. Um, got just some steel, just plain old steel. Got brass, copper, aluminum, and we're also gonna try a stainless steel cup. Yep. So that'll be fun. Oh, and on these, we just kind of sanded them, cleaned them up real good, scotch brighted them to give them a, not fully polished, but they're pretty shiny. It's all effects. Yeah. Okay, so this is what we're gonna be using for our resist. These are just um, vinyl cutouts that we uh, cut out on our vinyl cutter. You can use a lot of things for resist. You can use um, electrical tape. You can use um, even laser toner transferred. Um, I've even seen people use nail polish and even a Sharpie. All that stuff works. Because it literally, just a tiny bit of it gets removed. Barely anything. Yep. But yeah, so this black stuff is what's going to be the resist. So that's what's not going to be cut out. Whatever you see is white. Yep. That's what is going to show up on our uh, steel bars. That's what electricity is going to eat away. First step is to apply our vinyl stencil mask resist whatever you want to call it, to the workpiece. Clean the workpiece real good and wiped it down with uh, alcohol to get any oily goo off of there. And the proper tool for applying vinyl is an Olive Garden gift card, just in case you're wondering. I want to say only an Olive Garden gift card will work. But oh yeah, you can't use anything else, it won't work. Has to be Olive Garden. Okay. That was actually very fun to watch. Yes. Okay, so now we're going to connect our power source to the workpiece. This is the steel one, by the way. Um, alligator clips would be ideal for this, but I can't find any for some reason. But, clothespin. The almighty clothespin saves the day. Just a uh, bare wire touching right onto it. That should be just fine. That will have the same effect. And it's very important that the positive terminal of your power supply is connected to the workpiece and the negative terminal will be connected to your Q-tip electrode. It's just a Q-tip. Um, Electrode's fancier. And same thing, if we had um, alligator clips, this would be a lot easier, but I'm just gonna wrap the wire right around here. <clears throat> High tech. And we're gonna dip the end of that in our electrolyte, our vinegar salt solution. Then I got her plugged in. Now we're gonna see what she does. Holy cannoli. Already bubbles. Yep. That is current flowing from the workpiece into my wet Q-tip. I'm not sure if you can hear it on camera, but it's sizzling every time he touches it. Yeah, good grief. I'm cleaning some schmoo out of the way here. Oh, wow. 
And if it starts, see that all the black schmutz on there? That is steel coming steel off. Steel that has literally been taken off of the bar itself. Yep. All right, Sam is just going back and giving it a once over a little bit more. Uh, might just have to experiment with how long to etch it. We're just going, you know, a couple seconds in each spot and we'll find out when we're done, if it works. And that process was kicking out quite a bit of heat, so it might leave some of this adhesive residue behind. We'll just clean that off after the fact. We just wanna see if the etch worked. It's kinda of looking like it did. Alrighty, here is our first attempt on steel. And what's really cool is from some angles it's really subtle and then when the light hits it a certain way it like it really pops it's very cool it's all in the angle it's all about the angle next up brass never tried this before so first time for everything i guess <clears throat> It's not quite as violent of a reaction as the steel was. Yeah, it's still the tiniest bubbles though. Yeah, it's bubbling though. Finished cooking that one. Now Sam's gonna clean it off and peel it and see what we got. That is pretty stinking cool. Okay, we got the brass peeled. Got the adhesive stuff cleaned off, and it looks amazing. <laughs> it looks super it's cool. It's really cool. There's all kinds of little swirly patterns and stuff. I don't know if you can see all it's that. Picking up on the camera. I hope it's picking up on the camera. I'll get some pictures again later too. Like I said this camera is not set up for this exactly, but that turned out very cool. All right, now we're gonna try aluminum. See how that works. Once again, new experience. Not real sure what we're gonna get here. Pretty decent bubbling though. Less than we had on the steel, but more than we had on the brass. And it bubbles like crazy. It does. Experimenting with this one to just etch a little bit longer and see what it does. Here's how the aluminum turned out. It's got a really nice contrast. Um, some little splotchy areas, which probably has more to do with my technique than anything. But, man, it... It's just super sharp. Really like how the aluminum turned out. Turned out really cool. Yeah. The copper. It's behaving a lot like the brass. A lot like the brass. It's you doing it. You can still see the swirly. It's like doing it, the but brass. it's not nearly as active. Do we have any idea why it's turning blue? Uh, probably the same reason that the Statue of Liberty turned blue. When copper that is oxidizes, true. it turns bluish green. That could be the reason. Okay, if, if anybody knows exactly what's happening there, let us know. Drop it in the comments because we want to know. Am, I am not a chemist, <laughs> and I have forgotten a lot. It's been a while since chemistry class, and. Uh, Yes. Sam hasn't learned that yet, so maybe one of you know. Drop a comment if you know. Well, this is interesting. Sam got done etching it, and we just let it sit there for a little bit before we cleaned it off. And all the areas that we etched are turning that kind of blue-green color. Wiped right off with a little alcohol, so. Guys, wow! look at that. This Jesus. makes me wish I would have paid more attention in chemistry class. 
and here's the copper. It behaved an awful lot like the brass, which makes sense because there's a lot of copper in brass. It's a really nice sharp etch. Pretty subtle color difference depending on where you look at it, but overall, very cool. And now for the stainless steel. And this is not a new cup for anybody that's wondering. This Definitely a, not. It's not a Yeti. It's uh, a cheap knockoff of some sort. It's not a Shenzhen Yima, unfortunately. <laughs> already looks cool I don't think this has any sort of clear coat or anything on it I guess we'll find out it is bubbling it's though doing so that's a good sign I'm not sure how this would work if you used a cup that was like if it was clear coated or painted or anodized or something I'm assuming this would not work because it would not allow the electrical connection to do what it needed to do and there's stainless steel I mean there's nothing to come off in the dishwasher it's burnt right into the metal so if there's one thing we like around here is dishwasher safe yes all right everybody we learned a lot on this one which was kind of our goal because uh, we're sort of in quarantine right now with the stay at home order thing. So we just thought, let's use this time to learn some new skills. And that is exactly what we did. Definitely. Um, we were thinking about maybe incorporating this into some of our future projects, but we don't know exactly what those future projects are yet. Um, if you have any ideas, make sure you comment below and let us know what we should incorporate our metal etching in. So make sure you do that. We didn't do anything revolutionary here. This is not exactly a new process. There's tons of cool YouTube videos about this that you can check out, all kinds of different processes and techniques. And we had a pretty reasonable amount of success with this one. I definitely want to check out some new ways of doing it in the future. Yeah, but thanks for watching, guys. If you'd like to see those new ways that we might use in the future, make sure you don't miss out by subscribing to our channel. Also, if you'd like to see our last video, Click right here so you don't miss out on that. As always, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.